Well, as the race to implement 5G technologies continues, Qualcomm is introducing its second chip to connect to this new generation of high-speed data transfers. Qualcomm, facing increasing competition from rivals, is hoping the new chip will help avoid a repeat of what was a disappointing rollout of the previous generation's 4G chips. Here to tell us more, Bloomberg Tech's Ian King, who covers the semiconductor industry. So where did the Qualcomm chip stand? Well, they've already got their second generation of 5G chip coming before 5G is even here. I think that tell, speaks volumes for the rush that they're in. You know, they really, really want these 5G services to come and to come very quickly. They believe they can win. And, you know, the underlying thing here is if you look at what Qualcomm's done financially five years since the company grew its top line. So how does that stack up to competitors? Competitors, if we're to believe the published roadmaps are nowhere. Um, arguably, Intel is the, the closest competitor, and they're going to have their first 5G chip here in the second half of this year. So think about that. That's their first 5G chip coming along when Qualcomm's second one is already coming along. But all this is dependent upon the rollout of the networks. No networks, doesn't matter how good your chip is, there's no point. When are we expecting those network rollouts? Again, it really does depend on who you talk to. Um, the usual suspects, obviously, in East Asia, Korea, Japan, Singapore, we'll see you know, rollouts in some of the major cities there usually quickly. A bit of debate in this country as to who's going to be first, uh, whether it's going to be really 5G or not. But we'll see some services in the second half of this year. Meantime, what about customers? I mean, we've reported that Apple is not going to be integrating 5G technology this year. Right. Who knows about next year? Right, yeah, no, it's, it's a very good question. Obviously, Qualcomm and Apple are very far from best of friends right now. Apple is no longer using Qualcomm chips. Qualcomm sees this as an opportunity to put pressure on Apple to say, all of Apple's competitors powered by us have 5G chips. Where's Apple right now? Apple is obviously going to try and rely on the brand and rely upon their uh, existing phone and user base to keep coming back to them and 5G when it's ready, it's ready. Meantime, Samsung has their big unpacked event this week. Is Samsung going to beat Apple to the 5G punch? Yeah, I mean, Samsung is obviously a very tightly connected customer of Qualcomm, so even though we don't know yet, it's safe to assume that they are definitely going to be trying to roll out something ahead of time. So uh, when do you expect that we will see 5G truly hitting the mainstream? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's a very good question. And I think you've got to look at what the carriers are doing, OK? It's, it's one thing to listen to the phone makers, the chip makers, but you've really got to listen to Verizon. You've got to listen to China Mobile, how many subscribers, when. Once they start to set targets for themselves that they're going to have to meet, that they're, they're going to have to sell to the stock market, that's when it's going to be really happening. Now, speaking of a company that's not a carrier but is a phone maker and a network yeah. equipment provider, that is Huawei, which of course is in the midst of a huge controversy. You've got the United States government banning Huawei from U.S. networks, Europe, yeah. European countries considering banning Huawei from their networks. Where does Huawei stand in the 5G race? Yeah, well, I mean, if we were to focus on Europe, which is what the story was about, I mean, that's a very good question because if you're BT, if you're Orange, if you're Deutsche Telekom, you're reliant upon equipment makers like Huawei, like Ericsson, to do your engineering for you. So if the big, one of your biggest partners, which Huawei has become in Europe, can't work with you anymore or you're having second thoughts about working with them, that could potentially put you behind the eight ball here and it could mean that a lot of these rollouts that are supposedly planned for Europe might take longer or might cost more.